That is Dan Gilmore, Supply Chain Digest and the Supply Chain Television Channel. Thanks for joining us for another in our Supply Chain Thought Leadership video discussions today. A very provocative topic with all that's going on in Omnichannel and especially brick and mortar retailers looking to use their physical stores as fulfillment points. Do they need to use a new kind of approach, something like a traditional WMS but tailored for in-store use? I think the answer to that just might be yes. And I have a guest on here today, Roger Falkenstein of uh, High Jump Software, who's got some very interesting thoughts on this as well. He's coming to us today from the uh, Florida area, even though High Jump is uh, headquartered in Minnesota. Uh, Roger, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you, Dan. I'm glad to be here. You know, Roger, as I think about this, and I've actually brought this up in Supply Chain Digest in uh, a couple of years past, but, you know, as you're seeing more and more retailers, and I know you're working with a number of them, looking to do e-commerce fulfillment in store, you know, that means you need to control the process, you need to manage the people, you need to control the inventory. All that sort of starts looking like a dummy MS, or at least some form of it. Uh, do I have that right? Uh, you're absolutely right, Dan. Uh, the, the, the real challenge, I mean, certainly what we're finding is that that WMS-based tools are really something important because well, what the retailers really need is, is they need to control costs and the, and the biggest cost you're, you're faced with is labor. Uh, but retail stores aren't designed to move customers, uh, I mean, the pickers through a store um, like you would in a warehouse. They're designed to move customers slowly. So it's kind of a really uh, difficult environment. So you have to really have enough... Uh, uh, you know, unique capabilities to drive efficiency while working around the retail limitations, retail store limitations. Yeah, and, and I think that's right. You know, I mean, it's something like a WMS. They may or may not want to call it a WMS. Obviously, it's not exactly a warehouse, uh, but nevertheless, they need some of those capabilities, but they probably also need some things that you wouldn't find in a distribution center-based WMS. So what are some of the kind of capabilities a retailer needs in this situation, and how does that differ from a traditional, you know, DC-based WMS? Well, that's a really good question and things that we've discovered in, uh, in, a, in a few of our deployments and we continue to learn more and more. But probably the, the thing that you're not accustomed to in a retail store is having real-time inventory. Um, and then on top of that, it's challenging because you have customers right alongside of people that might do order fulfillment if you're trying to pick during peak times of the day. Uh, so that can really impact even the timing of, of what your inventory balance is. And then on top of that, in a re typical retail operation, you have something called planograms. But planograms aren't updated real time like you do in a WMS. They're sometimes updated monthly. Well, that just doesn't fly for you know, typical fulfillment. So you have to actually have other means of, of considering some you know, not so perfect environments and, and uh, you have to also then on top of that learn how to stage items. Uh, sometimes you, like in grocery, you're worried about temperature items, so there's a timing issue. Uh, and then if you're, if you're in a, and again in a grocery operation, you've got a lot of variable weight items like produce and meats. And then uh, because it's commodities, uh, like you have in a grocery store, you have substitutions, you have order changes, you have cancellations. Um, but, and then on top of this, you have to integrate with all these systems. You have to integrate with the planograms and the point of sale and the e-commerce systems, and maybe even parcel and other back office. So there's a lot of pieces to it that we find, uh, uh, it, although very much like WMS, uh, uh, it, it's different. Yeah, you know, it seems to me, I hadn't thought about that variable weight issue, and there may be some other kind of dynamics like that where, you know, you can't just go out and grab the skew, you've also got to grab the weight or the price or whatever, so that's interesting. But it sounds at the core to me, just like a WMS in a DC, you know, task management in the end is kind of the, you know, the, the, the center of gravity in the system. Sounds like you need that in retail too. Well, you do, and then you find some unique things, like, like if you go into an apparel uh, situation, a lot of times it's, uh, you know, racks aren't perfect, and then you, you have to use images so, you, so people can find this stuff because you can't just look for a SKU number or a description. So uh, again, unique. Yeah, very good. Well, you know, I, I was kind of wondering whether this was a uh, just a fantasy of uh, mine about where things are going, but you've talked about doing actual deployment, so this trend is real. Absolutely real. We're seeing it with a number of our customers, and, uh, and we have some very focused uh, deployments just on in-store fulfillment with a uh, you know, number of stores, both in grocery and in retail, just traditional um, apparel and um, uh, con consumer product good type retail.
Yeah, well, whenever you're uh, able to t you know, give us a little more detail about some of those case studies, we'd certainly love to hear it. Uh, you know, one of the things I wonder, you talked about, you know, store employees, store order pickers, if you will, kind of sometimes rubbing shoulders with actual customers. That is an interesting dynamic. Is anybody trying to change that at all, or at least for, you know, high, high velocity skews of setting up some kind of separate, I'll call it, pick area in the back room or some other place to, to sort of uh, streamline some of these processes? Well, well, absolutely. There are some people, some retail stores that set up what they call ware rooms. It's kind of like a subset of the of, of a warehouse in the back of the uh, a retail store where you might put your, you know, your 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 leading items or your your high velocity items or maybe like in a grocery store, maybe your fast movers like you know dairy and produce or something like that. Um, but but then you're finding a lot of hybrids because like we've seen some retailers decide they're going to go to uh, maybe a regional fulfillment center or maybe just one store where they focus on this and they'll feed the other regional stores. Um, so it, it and every retailer I think has to look at their their density um, of their customers, the kind of volumes they have. A, a lot of things around the geographies will impact what this looks like. So. Uh, it's just going to be quite a variety. And then f sometimes you're looking at store pickup versus delivery versus, you know, maybe parcel shipments. So there's, there's a ton of different uh, scenarios that we're seeing. Yeah, very good. Uh, this is a fantastic topic, Roger. Uh, you know, I'm wondering, you know, voice technology, because of its hands-free nature, uh, has come on very strong generally. I know Hydrump has a number of voice-based customers. It's very hot right now in e-fulfillment in a traditional type of distribution center space. I'm wondering whether voice uh, wouldn't make perfect sense in some of these dedicated store order pickers. Uh, do you agree? And are you seeing any uh, kind of interest in that? Well, you know, obviously we agree. Voice is, is uh, really... Uh, coming on strong as being a very effective tool in the traditional warehouse. We are a little bit challenged in, uh, in retail because some of the, uh, the things that I just mentioned, like for example, what if you can't find something? How with voice do you describe to somebody what something looks like? So the images work better, uh, you know, but there are, there are hybrid dev devices that you can do video as well as voice with. So I, I really expect uh, that there, there will be some, there'll be some inroads and some things that we'll do around that technology uh, but again, it, right now, it's, uh, we're still finding it a little difficult, at least in the early stages, to, to be a perfect fit. Yeah, well, you know, Roger, this has been a fantastic discussion. I know a lot of retailers are obviously uh, working very hard to figure this out. They're also trying to find a way to make money out of it because many are challenged right now uh, in that category. And things are changing very, very quickly. Hope you'll come back before too long and give us an update about how things are progressing. Oh, absolutely. We're, we're seeing announcements every week of big retailers that are doing pilot projects and uh, you just know we're all going to have a lot of discovery in this area and hopefully uh, we, can, we can provide some great value to your, uh, uh, you know, your viewers or people that uh, want to get interested in all the messages that you want to share, Dan. Okay, Roger, thanks so much for joining me. You bet. Have a great day.